that's great. Well, good. Well, we've got a good turnout of people. So I'm going to jump right in. Um, nice to see some returning faces and maybe we'll get some more people on their screens soon. So um, you may have seen in the Facebook group, I posted about it. I talked about it in the meeting this morning. Um, today we're talking about what highly successful people do with their time. So I find that this is something that's really um, near and dear to me because this has always been a challenge for me, this time management piece. Um, and is anybody else here feeling like, okay, I feel like I have a thousand things to do and I don't even know where to start. Like how, where, what do I do with my time? How I, like the day is done and I'm like, I don't even know what I did. Um, this week is over and I've got all this stuff I was supposed to be working on and I don't feel like I'm getting any traction with my business as a result and time is just flying by and it's winter and all I want to do is wear sweatpants and sit on my couch and watch something on Netflix, right? So it's really, really easy, especially right now when we don't have some of the other things we're used to having going on in our lives to sort of balance things out, give us incentive to cut off our work day, um, you know, those sorts of things. So the work day just goes on and on and on and really ineffectively kind of peters out at the end of the day very late. Um, at least that's true for me. And I have had, um, you know, I have lots of great weeks and then I have weeks where I'm like, oh, geez, what happened? So it's a continuous thing that you need to constantly be checking yourself on. It's not like set it and forget it and you're done forever. Um, it's a good thing to go back to again and again. So I thought it would be good to have some like main points of things that highly successful, highly effective people do to give you something to go off of, to give you just some basic wins for the day that um, will help you feel like you've had a very productive day and week, which, you know, that snowballs and it leads into a productive month, quarter, year. Um, if you fall off track, you can come back to these things to hopefully get you back on pace to making the most of your day. And I will tell you, this does not mean that every minute of your day is scheduled with work, right? There's much more to it than that. It's not that your checklist has 25 things on it and you're getting all 25 done in the day. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about real sustainable time and energy use. Um, habits is what we talked about last week. So if you missed that, go back and watch the video. Um, you know, we talked about building out your habits based on your goals, that starting with just one at a time is really important because if you try to do too many, you won't really establish those habits and habits are definitely part of being an effective, um, efficient person, right? Things that kind of do set themselves, tie into your regular already existing habits and make you more effective. Um, but there's a little bit more to it. So first thing I have for you is a question and you should have an answer, but you might not. Don't be ashamed if you don't, but um, what is the most important thing you have to get done today? The one, if, if the whole day ends and you've just done one thing, Peter, lead generation. So what are you doing for your lead generation today? I haven't done a damn thing yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's still morning, but what's your plan? Right. Um, Lead generation is the number one thing, but I still have things that I have to follow up on from lead generation that I did last week. Um, you know, the days get away. I was, I did a camera last night at 830. Definitely not on my schedule to be doing, um, but it's just, it's one of those things. So now I have to follow up with that to make sure about the earnest money deposit return, um, follow up on things. I'm, I'm, I have to do a, an inspection a report amendment. Um, I have to follow up on lead follow up on some of the, the buyers that I've been working with to set up their mm -hmm. subscriptions. Um, I just, I remember so clearly standing in the hallway outside of your office last, it, it was probably last March or April and um, kind of had your head down and you just said, it's just, it's when everything happens at once, it's hard to prioritize. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm here, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, and let me ask you this. Do you have a time blocked and scheduled into your day for your lead generation? I have my bold planner and I have my colored pencils. Green for things that make me money, yellow for things that I need to do. Um, and I'm, I'm getting better at it, but I'm not really good at it. And I write everything in pencil so that 
if I have to erase, I can replace. So I'm doing the lead generation, lead follow-up, going on appointments, negotiating contracts, but it's... Um, it's a lot, right? I need an assistant. <laughs> well, and that may very well be true. Um, speaking from somebody who was told that she needed an assistant way before I thought I did, um, it does make a huge difference. And, um, you know, even just a part-time person, you know, my assistant started five hours a week and it just took a little bit of relief from me. Um, so delegating is a, is a piece of it. I would also say for Peter and for anybody else who's feeling like, I don't even know where to start. All these things need to be done. They're time sensitive. They're important. You know, they, they pop up. This is part of this business. Things just pop up. Um, the important thing to keep in mind is that there should be one thing in your calendar, Peter, that is in pen. And that's your lead generation. That's the <laughs> number one thing that gets blocked out and is non-movable. This is an appointment. You don't have to tell people, well, I'm supposed to be lead generating, but you know, I know I can do that anytime. And like, it's just phone calls. I can do it from anywhere, but no, this is the most important thing that gets blocked. It does not matter what you call it. If it's your most important thing, it's blocked. And then all people need to know is I'm unavailable at that time. That's it. Same thing if it's, you know, time with my family, you know, I've got dinner scheduled tonight. I don't need to tell the co-broke or my client, like, oh, I'm really sorry. I'm going to dinner with my family tonight. You know, that, that sounds like something less important than what's going on with you. Doesn't, no, you don't need to explain. I have an appointment at that time. Here's when I'm available. So that one most important thing should be scheduled. And that's the thing that gets me regularly. If I don't take the time to plot out my week and take the time the night before the workday before to plot out when I'm going to be doing that most important thing the next day, it very conveniently slides all the way down to like the end of the workday and I don't have enough time to do it. And then, sorry, honey, I'm going to be a little bit late, but we have to have dinner. Okay. So I'm just going to get my computer out after dinner and I'll just have it out while we're watching TV. And it'll take me four times as long to do whatever I'm supposed to be doing less effectively. And then my client's getting emails from me at 10 PM. So I'm setting the expectation they can reach me then. What am I doing? But that happens all the time. So the scheduling, the taking the time to actually plot it in your schedule, the taking the time to plan out your day and be really honest about how much, you time, how much time you need to do those most important things. Maybe it's three most important things. You know, maybe it's your lead generation, which is your regular thing. And then it's, you know, something related to a new listing because that's important, right? That's what leads to making money, taking care of your clients. And then maybe it's one other thing that you're working on, like a habit goal. So really taking the time to wrap up your workday and plan the next day, really taking the time to plan the upcoming week and plot it out. Geez, I have a lot to do this week. My top three are going to take some time. And right now I know Monday through Wednesday, I'm booked. So I know that if I need to get that stuff done, I should plot it in Thursday and Friday now before I take on more appointments, because what'll happen is suddenly it's Thursday or Friday and I realize I don't have enough time to get these things done. This happened to me last week. My top three did not get done last week. I had a ton of appointments, which was really exciting, which leads to more things to do, right? Working on my business rather or working in my business rather than on my business. On my business is the behind the scenes, the structure of my business, the things that keep things running. The in my business is the returning the call, sending the document back, following up with that lead. And it's all important stuff, but you've it's really good to get a big picture of what's coming up the full week. What do I need to accomplish the whole week? And when can that stuff really happen and plug it in? Even better, just have that as a standing appointment with yourself. So my planning next week is a standing appointment with myself. That always happens at a certain time on a certain day for a certain amount of time and it's blocked. That's sacred time that does not move. Nobody can change that, it's in pen. Because if I don't do that, the next week is bananas. It means I'm a mess, my clients aren't getting the care they need, I don't get the sleep I need, it's stressful, I feel bad about it. It's totally not worth skipping that one really important thing which is planning next week. And 
if you have a few of those, you know, set in place, always happen at this time appointments, it becomes easier to say no, right? Because when you're saying yes to something, you're saying no to everything else. So if you're saying yes, lead generation is my most important thing that has to happen. It's going to happen, you know, four days a week at 10 a.m. to noon and nobody can bug me at that time. I'm setting up my email to reply to people that I won't be available at that point in time. I'm setting my do not disturb on my phone. I'm not checking social media. This is all I'm doing as my lead generation, unless your lead generation's on social media, but careful with that. So block it out this time every week on this day, this is what happens. And it becomes more natural as people ask you for appointments, as people want your time, do you have a few minutes? Can I talk to you about this? Can I talk to you about that? You know, well, at 10 o'clock and it's 9.50 and somebody wants to talk to me about something, you know what, I've got a really important thing to get to. I've got to get to my one thing, starts at 10, I want to be ready and focused. You know, get your water, take your bathroom break and then just get into it. And having that blocked and having it plotted as an appointment that is unmovable, that is super important, is a major, major thing you can do. If you do nothing else, just try to plot that out for the rest of your week and see how much of a difference that makes. It's really, really easy to think like, of course I'll get that done. It's my most important thing. But suddenly it's the last hour of the day and there's no way you're getting everything done. And that's getting pushed off because it's not tied to a client directly. It's not tied to a deadline. It's very, very easy to push those things off. And then suddenly you've had all these closings, but you've got no business coming up, right? That's kind of the typical real estate agent. You get a bunch of business, you get excited, you get totally caught up in what's going on, closings happen, and then you have nobody. And then you have to build back up your business. So your paychecks are super inconsistent. And then you're desperate for about a month or two before the next check rolls in. That's not how you want to do business. It's hard to get to that point, but honestly, it's as simple as blocking out that time for that most important thing to keep things running. And you can do that for a few things. Don't do it for every minute of your day, but pick those most important things, your top three goals for the quarter, your top things for the year, and then build them out backwards and plot those into your week. Um, One of the things that Um, that's one of the things that highly efficient people do. They're really protective of that most important thing in the day. What do I have to get done today? Um, Anybody else have a most important thing for the day? That was a good one, Peter. Nobody has an important thing to do today. What are you doing today? Do you want to have a business? Would you like to make money? Same same thing. (laughs) Lead gen. Same thing? Okay. Lead gen. Yep. Cool. Um, Grady, what do you do for lead gen? Uh, I actually go by last name on Facebook. I'll do like a space and then like a letter and then I'll kind of type something up like reaching out um, if I don't have like their phone number or email. Uh, In that case, then I can call them. So I kind of have like not necessarily like a script for it, but basically something I just go to as far as, you know, reaching out, seeing how they're doing and how I can be of service to them. And then if they don't mind with their phone and email and then uh, go from there, entering it into command. And then uh, you DM them, private message? Yep. And then it usually leads to like a whole nother conversation, which, you know, will lead to like a phone call or something, you know, it's like, oh man, like, you know, it's been like four years, like, you know, what's the deal? Like, you know, then catch up and then you kind of go from there. So. Awesome. That's great. Brittany, what were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, I'm just trying to learn everything for the day, responding to the emails, (laughs) getting access because I, I don't know, I was a little bit confused. Maybe somebody can answer for me if I'm thinking about this incorrectly about the Ignite mm-hmm. training. Because um, I mean, um, what is her name? Amanda, Mandy Kate? Yeah. We were going back and forth about that. I was, my question was, it's something that we invest into, correct? Like, could you, the way it was described to me, we pay like a portion of our sales for being in that. So I was just wondering, like, if you jump in and I'm jumping in on session nine, how do I get the other nine sessions? You know what I mean? So, so I yeah. I want to just jump into it because when I've seen it, I'm like, I'm showing that they're on nine. What if they're talking about things that I don't, like that was covered in one through eight that I've missed? Yeah, for Ignite, we'll, they'll run it again and again and again. Um, so you'll be able to jump back in. The, the investing into the program is this program. This is productivity. So it's required for all new agents, productivity, launch, it's all part of that launch program. 
Um, so yeah, and there's, there, oh, we're updating kind of the description of how that all operates, but it's the helpline, it's Joan and Kimmy, it's um, me and Janine doing these classes. So there, it's all the support you get as a new agent. So yeah, when you're brand new, so Brittany just started, like just, just started. And when you're brand new, you know, maybe your one thing is just to get acquainted with how this all works. You know, you're allowed to make that your one thing. It's important, right? If you don't know what your resources are, if you don't know where to go for things, if you're not quite sure when the time comes, you're writing an offer, like what you need to do to be prepared for that. That's a huge one thing. So it's something you can break down into smaller pieces and starting out just by coming to these classes, talking to other people in the program, that's a good way to get acquainted and kind of get that rolling. So that's a good one thing too. So when you have your one thing in mind, if, if nothing else, you should have one most important thing in the day that's gonna help you make progress towards your biggest goals, right? So you have big goals for the year, you've got a business goal, you've got a personal goal, maybe one other for the quarter. And that's, that should be directing how you're using your time. So that's a big one. Another thing that highly efficient and effective successful people do is they have a morning routine. Who has a morning routine? Even if you don't do it every single day, who has a morning routine of some sort? And I'm not talking like I read 60 pages and I run five miles, like some kind of routine. I get up and then this stuff happens and then I start my day. Or do you just kind of fly out of bed and you're like, oh shoot, didn't brush my teeth. Oh, gotta jump in the shower. Oh shoot, I don't have socks on. Crap, I forgot my phone chaos, chaos every morning. So really simple. I feel like this is something that becomes such a, it feels like so much bigger, like, oh God, it's got to be super, super elaborate and impressive. And it's something I can brag about. Who cares? It's about you, right? So find a few things that are going to help set your mind right for the day. Charlie talked about this this morning. He wakes up and looks at his phone and social media. First thing, bad idea, right? Who wants to start their day like that? There's nothing positive on there that's worth looking at all the negative stuff, right? Not the first thing of the day. I figured out something on my phone that I'm super psyched about this week. Um, you can block apps on your phone for certain periods of time if you have an Apple phone. So from the time I wake up until the time I'm done with my one thing work time in the morning, I cannot access Facebook, Instagram, messenger, a bunch of stuff that's distracting. I just can't access it. If I do, it has to ask me if I want to, I have to really think about it. I have to go through this thing. So it's a great way to block myself from that. So hot tip, definitely worth trying. It's totally worked so far. Um, but when it comes to morning routine, this is things like I get up at the same time every workday. So you're still allowed to have your Saturday, your day off, whatever that is. And, and sleep in or do something more casual. But those days that you're working, this is what we're talking about. This is the stuff that gets your mind right, gets your body right, energizes you and sets you up for success for the day. So instead of flying out of bed, running around like a maniac, limping out the door with one shoe on, and then realizing that you forgot half your stuff at home, start off on the right foot. And even if you have kids and other things going on, there's some simple things you can do, right? You don't have to get up at four in the morning. If you're an early riser, great, you're ahead of the game. But if you're not, just pick some small things that will get you set up for the day. So maybe you can't exercise for an hour, but maybe you can do like a 10 minute something, right? Can you roll out of bed onto a yoga mat and do a 10 minute video on YouTube? Can you um, go for a walk around the block? If you have a dog, there's a great reason to do that, right? Go for a walk and while you're walking, you listen to um, some affirmations for 15 minutes. You know, small things like that to just kind of set your mind for the day, to get your body moving, to give yourself some energy, <clears throat> to help you focus. You know, small health things, like I mentioned this last week, you put a glass of water next to your bed or on the kitchen tables so that the first thing you do when you wake up is you chug a glass of water because that kind of helps get you focused, bring you energy, wake you up. So it's small things, but you know, a few small things can really start to add up and build up and help you feel put together in the morning, right? I have laid out my clothes the night before. 
I've got my alarm set for my regular time. I know I'm going to get up. I'm going to chug a glass of water. I'm going to feed my dog. I'm going to grab my phone for my yoga video. I'm going to do a 15 minute yoga, a 10 minute meditation. I get up and get ready. I know it takes me 25 minutes to get ready and we're out the door. I put everything in my bag the night before. So I know what I need. I'm checking my planner one last time. What are my top three things for the day? When are they happening? Excellent. Off and running. I've done zero social media scanning and scrolling and doom scrolling. I've not gotten distracted from what's happening in the world. I'm focused on me and getting myself ready to be the best person I can be for everybody else today. That's it. Just something manageable. Now, if you want to have a two hour morning routine where you're journaling and you're whatever, great, do it. If that works for you, stellar. If you want to get up at five and like, have an hour long Peloton, like go to town. If that works in your life, great. If it doesn't, and you need to get up and get the kids out the door and then have your morning time, do that. There's no rule about what it has to look like. It just has to be something to set you up for the day. And it's something that consistently, every time I'm reading a book, listening to a podcast, hearing an interview with this highly successful person, a morning routine is always part of that conversation. There is a book called Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents. It's like this big, it's a story, it's super easy to read. Peter's holding it up right there. If you are looking for a resource to help you get an idea of how to do that, Miracle Morning is its own book. And then there's one for real estate agents specifically. Um, that's great. It's just a, a, if you're into reading to help you kind of figure out the next steps, that's a good way to go. They've got a Facebook page for support and all kinds of other things too, if you want accountability on that. So having a morning routine is big. Knowing your most important thing for the day is a huge piece and having that plotted in your calendar as an appointment. Um, <clears throat> another one is to do your most important thing when you are most focused. And what I, I keep experimenting with where to plot this in the day and I just keep coming back to morning. For the most part, that is the time when I'm least likely to have a last minute showing right? Inventory is low. So if a house pops up on the market, we got to go today. And it's way less likely that that has to happen before 10, right? So for me, that makes sense. For a lot of real estate agents, that makes sense. So depending on what your family schedule is and what else you have going on in your life, getting that most important thing done in the morning may be your best bet. It also is the time you're less likely to get phone calls from people, to get emails from people, things that need immediate attention where they expect you to reply right away. You know, if you've got a deadline for something or a lender needs to reach you, you know, you still have the rest of the day. If you're doing your most important thing from three to five, then by the time you get back to them, it's the end of the business day. And that may be a problem. So something to consider is where you plot that most important thing of the day um, is also when I have blocked my social media because I um, that rolls me into the next thing, which is knowing that work time is for work and break time is for breaks and to make sure that you are taking breaks. This is big. It seems lazy, self-indulgent to take time to breathe in between work, right? We live in a society where everybody brags about how they worked 18 hours today and they took no breaks. They didn't even pee or eat and they're so great, right? good for you. So you're dehydrated. You probably feel sick. You're ready to pass out. And whatever you've been working on probably could have taken you half the time if you'd just taken a break, right? We're so much more effective if we take breaks. There's a great story about um, the Iditarod. So the dog sled race in um, Alaska and how there was somebody who decided they were going to try something really unusual that no one had tried before, that instead of racing as long as they possibly could each day until the dogs are practically falling over, they were going to have a specific time every day where they stopped. So they would get a certain number of miles, stop and take a break, have a good rest, and then they'd get back to it. And everybody thought this guy was crazy. Why would you do that when everybody else is just pushing it to the limit, right? There's no way you're going to beat everybody else. Well, what they found was the dogs were so refreshed and he was on his best game, that they won handedly, handedly, because they took the time to take rests. They planned breaks. And that's the thing, they're planned, right? 
So instead of saying, I'm working on something and man, I really deserve a little bit of a breather. So I'm just going to drift off into social media, or I'm just going to have a 20 minute conversation with whoever walks past my office, right? Like I'm just going to let myself drift into this and it's not planned and it's half attention on two different things. That's not a break and it's not working. It's ineffective. So just give yourself breaks in between. You can use something called the Pomodoro method. Pomodoro meaning tomato in Italian. So Pomodoro is you're working for 25 minutes and then you take a five minute break. There's timers out there you can put on your phone. There's a little cube you can get where you like set the time and it reminds you when you're done, it's time to take a break. For some people, this is not enough time to get into real deep focused work. So figure out what works for you. You might have to experiment a little bit. So it might be 90 minutes and then a 20 minute break. It might be 45 or 50 minutes and then a 10 minute break. But it's good to set some kind of timer where you don't have to watch that clock and worry about it. And then it dings and you realize, up, oh, automated reminder, I have a break. Set it down. Don't work on other piddly stuff that's popped up. Just give yourself a minute. And if you need some kind of window to take care of things that need attention that have popped up during your important work time, then give yourself that window. But it's really very, very effective to take breaks, even if it sounds like counterproductive. And just 10 minutes makes all the difference. Get up, walk around, get some fresh air, look outside, get some water, bathroom break, whatever. Just give yourself that time so that when you get back to working, you're fully focused because you know you have another break coming up. Another thing that highly efficient, effective, successful people do is they have scheduled email processing times. Scheduled email processing times. This is something I started doing pretty early on because I realized that between text messages and emails, the alerts on my phone never stopped. Does anybody have this happen to them? Like even early on in real estate, everybody needs you for something. Everybody else's schedule is the most important thing to them, right? Like we have dates and deadlines, yes. But your email list is everybody else's priority list. I'm going to say that again. Your email is everyone else's priority, right? I need you to get me this. Can you send me that? Can you get this taken care of? I have a question about this right? At the end of the day, your most important thing is going to make you the best person to help those people. So not constantly half, half alertedly sending, receiving emails, like while you're driving, been there, not a good idea. Oh, did I even send that? I don't even remember, right? Just set a few times during the day when you're actually going to look at your email and let people know. It's all about setting expectations. When you talk to your clients, when you send a thank you to the co-broke about the accepted offer, hey, just so you know, I only check my email three times a day. So if you need to reach me immediately, text me or call me. But I have set times a day when I review email. That's when I will be replying to email. Then you have a set amount of time. You get in there. You're fully focused on the email. You're going through, you're responding, you're making note, you're getting rid of the stuff you don't need so you don't end up with 2000 emails in your inbox, also been there. <laughs> and you're replying to what needs to be done and then it's done and then you move on, right? You leave it be. It doesn't become one of those habit, oh, I'm gonna check Facebook and then, oh, let me just check my email real quick. And then, oh, did I get that text? Oh, and then, and all of a sudden like two hours has gone by and you're like, I've done nothing, right? Just make it in a identified time in the day when you check your email. Okay, I've gotten my one thing done for the day. Now I'm gonna check my email. Okay, I just had lunch and got a nice breather. I'm just gonna bounce into email real quick. I've got good energy and focus. I can just plow through this quickly and move on. Okay, it's towards the end of the work day. It's like four. I'm gonna check this again just to make sure everything's good before I go on appointments, before the business day ends for title and lender, that kind of stuff, right? Setting those times gives you permission to not have to constantly monitor that. So that's a good one. Easy tip that you can do without having to think too much about it. Just kind of set up your times. Okay, after lunch, you know, link those habits together. After I finish my one thing in the morning, I check my email for a half hour. 
after my lunch, I check my email for a half hour. However it works for you, but giving yourself that time takes a tremendous amount of pressure off of you to be constantly monitoring your email. I promise it's great. Um, the other thing that highly effective successful people do is they have a hard stop on their workday. Now, where I learned this was obviously not from a real estate podcast or a person, <laughs> right? For us, there are times when showings happen after business hours, right? That's when a lot of showings happen. Saturdays, after five, on the weekdays. Sometimes you don't know until you get into the day whether that's happening or not. So here's what I've done that seems to work for me. I have an end time for showings during the week. So I have a showing window. I may or may not end up with showings during that time, but there is an end time for showings those days. That is when the workday ends. So if you wanna schedule showing with me, I'm not gonna be out there till 9 p.m. Nobody makes good decisions at 10 p.m. when they're writing offers. It doesn't make any sense. We can't get a hold of people. Let's be realistic about it. We should be done by seven. We should be done by 7.30. You know, figure out what works for you. But having that end time set is important. I also have an end time set for my working on stuff day, right? So appointments are one thing, and, you know, showings are one thing, but the rest of my work day, the, you know, email and phone calls and all that stuff has an end time and it's different each day. I've set up an ideal week based on what I have going on in my life with my family and where my priorities are when I usually have appointments with clients and I've set an end time to my work day each of those days of the week. The way that I make sure that happens and believe me, it doesn't happen every week, that's for sure, but it's, I'm making progress, is I have a set half hour at the end of that time where I'm doing my wrap up for the day. So it's my last chance to just do a quick email scan to see where I got with my most important things for the day, my progress, to name at least one victory or one win from the day, something I'm grateful for, Make sure that I have everything set up for tomorrow. So my most important things for tomorrow are plotted. I've moved my to-do list over the things that need to move over. I know what my schedule is for tomorrow. And then I can close everything and take a breath and say that that part of my day is done. Then I can go into my appointments without feeling like I need to be checking my email. I need to wrap something up oh shoot, I didn't do that thing. I can be fully present with my clients and I can be fully present with my family, my friends, whatever I'm doing after work, COVID safe, I can be present because I've closed off my workday. And for anybody in any business, you guys know too, there's always stuff to do, right? There's always stuff to do. There is always something that needs to be done, right? You start to close your planner, you start to turn off your phone, you put your keys in your pocket. Oh, there's one more thing. Oh, I forgot about something else. There's always gonna be something. You've gotta find a point where you can say, I'm stopping for now. I can't do this at the moment. I will get it to you tomorrow morning. A lot of this is about communication, right? If you have a co-broke and you know your workday ends at six, maybe when you set your deadlines for amendments, you make sure they reply by 5 p.m. If that's a reasonable amount of time, put a time in there, not just a day. We'd like to hear back by five. That way I know I can get it. I can talk to my client. I can do what we need to with it. And it's not rolling in at 8 p.m., right? Like to some extent, you can control some of that stuff with communication, with being proactive. You know, when you talk to your clients and you say like, okay, if, you're, if you want to get this, you know, amendment together, when are you available? Okay, let me see how that fits in my schedule. Let's set a time. Don't just say what works for you, right? Because then you're on their schedule and you have a lot to juggle too. And to be most effective for them, it's important that you're working at a time when you're actually available to work and you're not trying to do two things at once. So having that hard and fast, this is when my workday ends, it's gonna be a bit of an experiment, right? You're gonna have to try it out a little bit you're gonna have to see how it works. You're gonna have to talk to your family or whoever you live with to see what 
they need and when, you know, when does dinner start and do I have to pick somebody up? That's going to have some, um, you know, it's going to determine some things. And maybe you do that thing and then you have a window when you finish your business for the day and it's later in the evening. It's going to be what works for you, but you should have a time and set an alarm if it helps. This is when my workday is done. Hey, reminder, shut it off you know, shut it down, do your final things of the day. Here's a 15 minute, 30 minute warning. Your workday is ending soon. Get what you can done and then be done. Right. How many of you, when you have a deadline, you're like, oh no, I have to be at this thing. It's a scheduled thing and I can't be late. And suddenly like all the things you're supposed to do during the day are like getting crammed into an hour and you're more effective in that hour than you were all day. Right. So giving yourself those deadlines and boundaries that are self-imposed is a good way to make that happen, to make you more efficient. You know, one of my goals this year is to work 40 hours a week instead of whatever the heck I'm working a week now. <laughs> and part of that is having a cutoff. Part of that is really focusing my energy. Part of that is knowing what my important thing is for the day, having it scheduled and making sure it happens. Part of that is taking breaks so that when I am working on things, I'm fully focused, I'm really effective, and then I can move on to the next thing. Those are the days I really feel like I've won. And if you get some momentum from that, you can more easily roll into the next day and be like, oh, I'm for sure getting up when my alarm goes off because I know that that little morning routine that I've started really made a difference yesterday. And I want, I want that feeling at the end of tomorrow. Right? So this is a lot of things that you can add to your day. Do I recommend doing them all at once? Absolutely not. Take one thing that you think will make a big difference that will make everything else easier or unnecessary. You know, just take your most important thing that you should be doing and plot it in your calendar for this week. And then keep that appointment. Make that your one thing you take from this class and try to build some momentum with and then add something else to it. You know, keep these other things question. in mind. Go ahead. So I just started to laugh when you said 40 hours, because that to me sounds like crazy talk. <laughs> yeah. But then I reflected. Now, when you started doing these things, started limiting your work time, started leveraging, started this scheduling, your business really took off, didn't it? Took off, yeah. I mean, I, when I started my first year, I closed 12 transactions. My second year, I closed 32. And that had a lot to do with me taking the time to figure out how to be as efficient as possible. And a lot of this was time management, which has always been a struggle for me. It's one of the reasons that I touch on this a lot, because I am always learning new ways to um, control my time and energy better. Um, and, and when you do that, it does make a difference. You know, there's a lot of pieces to that. And it's been over time, adding a habit, adding a habit, trying something different, tweaking, falling off the horse. I still have days where I'm like, what did I even do today? But if I can forgive myself and plan the next day and get back on the horse, then by the end of the week, I've made good progress. So it's not to the goal of perfection. It's, to, it's really to be aware and purposeful and intentional with how I'm using my time and energy. And that really gets you far. I mean, I am far from perfect on nearly everything I do in my business, but we still, I closed 70 deals last year and that's pretty great. Like, you know, I'm not perfect, but I, I made progress. So there, this is to say that you don't have to perfect every bit of any class that I teach, but if you can take one thing and really own it and make it happen, you're going to make steps in the right direction and that will really get you far. Um, you know, I do have an assistant as well. So when you do get to the point where you're feeling like I just cannot get this all done, um, then it's really time to consider an assistant. And that's probably like beyond the time you should have considered an assistant. You should be like, <laughs> Hmm, I see this going to a point where I probably will need one. And I luckily had some, Joan, who's now joined us, was my mentor when I started. And she told me before I realized that I would need an assistant. And so having somebody to help 
even if you hire, you know, Renee to do transaction management for a few deals, or you bring somebody on board to take care of some of your, um, you know, marketing, whatever it is, um, having that help, that leverage of somebody else to help you out can be another piece of, you know, best using your time and energy. And that's kind of next level, right? Like as you start getting going, Peter's at the point where like, he, he really locked in, he watched all the classes, he participated, he followed a lot of what he learned in Ignite and he's really taken off. And now he's in that next level of like, oh geez, I have so much going on. What do I do now to keep this going at a high level to take great care of my clients and to continue to grow? So it's a new time to kind of reflect, look back at things. Um, you know, the last thing that I think is a really important piece of what highly effective people do is they give themselves thinking time. And this is the thing that will allow you as you grow or as you fall off track or um, as you have a great year that you give yourself that time every week to really be aware of what's happening. Do I need to make tweaks? Can I celebrate that things are going well? Um, gosh, maybe I do need an assistant, you know, just giving yourself that time instead of pushing it off and saying like, well, come December when I'm thinking about next year, or maybe come the end of the quarter, you know, giving yourself that thinking time every week is super important. It doesn't matter how much business you're doing. Um, there's a book called The Road Less Stupid, which I think is a terrible title, but it's called The Road Less Stupid. It's by Keith Cunningham. Um, there are tons of podcasts out there that have interviewed him as well. He's a hoot. If you get the audiobook, it's funny. He's very dry. Um, but I recommend getting the book as well because there's excellent prompt questions in there. And his whole point is like terrible things can happen. He lost $10 million on a bad decision because he wasn't paying attention to what was going on. And this is how he learned that he really needed to take the time to be aware, to pay attention, to look at the big picture, to refocus, just to give himself thinking time every week. And so that's what the book's about, um, is just taking you know completely uninterrupted 45 minutes a week to really think about what's going on. For me, that's when I build my week for next week. So I give myself time to reflect, wins for the week, how far did I get on my top three most important things for the week? What worked and what didn't work and why? And what am I gonna do next week? Those are my thinking time questions. And then if I've got some big thing that's been rolling around in my mind, I'll make sure I've got longer time to work on thinking time or I've got another plotted appointment with myself during the week to do that. Like right now I'm still like kind of pulling out pieces of my goals to know that I'm ready to go for next quarter. So I'm making sure I have another thinking time for that. So I think that's a good thing to reflect on is like, Peter, take the time, you know, this is a project goal. Maybe I need an assistant. What does that involve? What can I pay them? How can I find somebody? Talk to Mandy and Charlie about maybe they know someone, um, figure out what stuff you don't like doing or need help with and how many hours a week is that gonna require? And let me tell you, having some damn payroll is real motivating to make sure you have money coming in. So <laughs> if you have an assistant, Joan tells this story all the time. Joan had an assistant that she hired. She realized that she had to pay her no matter what, whether she had work for her or not. And so very quickly after a few weeks of her assistant coming in, Joan having nothing ready for her to do and having to pay her anyway, she figured out very quickly that she needed to have work ready for her. She needed to be more organized and on her A game so that she had stuff for her assistant to do because she's paying her regardless. And that led to more business, that responsibility of being the person paying this person um, led to that motivation she needed to be on top of it. And it was because she was paying her regardless. So, you know, that can be a thinking time block. If you're just starting out, maybe it's, okay, what are the most important things I need to do the rest of this month to start making paces towards getting into production. What do I need to do? Block out classes on my schedule, block out times to meet with whomever, block out time to play in command to make sure I know how it works, you know, whatever that is. Um, it's really about being intentional and purposeful with your time. Don't let the week happen to you. Control the week. That's how you make progress. 
right? I didn't get to the end of 2020 and go, shucks, I don't know how this happened. I hardly tried. It just fell on me, right? No, man, that was hard. And I worked my butt off. And you know why? Because I focused on what was most important. When I fell off track, I got back on. It wasn't a perfect year, but I was really thoughtful about how I was using my time and energy. Every week, I had to refocus. How do I get back on track? How do I get myself towards those big goals? And then every week I was having some thinking time. Wow, this is a crazy world we live in. How can I make contributions to the world? How can I make strides to reach my big goals? And how is my big why, my purpose fueling all of this? It was super important for me to have that to keep me going, right? So just being intentional and purposeful with even one thing from this list is going to make a difference. You're going to see a difference. It's not going to be instant. It's going to be over time, but it's headed in the right direction. And if you fall off track, don't give yourself a hard time. Just jump back on. Everybody falls off track. There is no perfect person in the world. The richest, most successful people still make mistakes, still have weeks where they don't get stuff done, but they know what they need to do and they take the time to get back on track. So that's what's more important. You know what you need to do. Okay, now plot it out. Make it happen. Don't just make it all, gosh, I have to decide in the moment what happens next. No, automate it. Make it easy for yourself. Okay, every Tuesday after lunch, I do an hour of lead gen. You know, every Thursday after productivity, Janine's handing me uh, names and a script I have to use for lead generation. I've got no excuse. I'm doing two hours of lead gen after productivity every Thursday. And just that thing is going to make a difference, right? Grady, I saw you said you've gotten appointments from it. I've seen other people get appointments from doing that. You know, if you need to lock into a program that's there for you, if you need to tie that habit to something you're already doing, then do it. There's not, there's no cheating, you know, make it easy. Great path of least resistance and you'll actually do it. Cool. Nobody's out there judging you because you like did something that made it easier for you. No. They're just looking at your results. They don't see all the process behind it, right? And remember that when you're looking at other people too. You're only seeing the results. You don't see all of the things happening beneath the surface to get them there. So it really is that simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. Just picking a couple of things to really own your schedule, to own your time and energy, to know what your priorities are and to be able to be present out Outside of work, that is a thing that exists. Outside of work. <laughs> I'm saying this to myself as much as I'm saying it to you. So keep that in mind as well, that this is as much about controlling work so that you can have a life outside of work. This is bigger than just being a successful real estate agent. This is about having a quality life worth living, right? So having some control over those things ensures that you are not sitting at dinner with your phone under the table, that you're not spending time with your kids or your grandkids on the phone with a client, you know, as much as you can help it, stuff's going to pop up, but as much as you can help it, as much as you can be proactive about it, as much as you can communicate about it and have something in place, people will respect it. You'll be surprised. And it's not something that you have to wait until you've earned if you're a busy agent right? Get that stuff in place now. Start those habits now. Then you don't have to have that battle later when you've got a lot more going on that requires your attention and is time sensitive. You know, just get that rhythm going while you can. So, and if you can't, you know, get back in there, take some thinking time, figure it out, reset, keep going. But I think these things are all some really great tips that have come from many very successful people. Um, that I've pulled from the one thing I've pulled from a few different podcasts. Um, there's a lot of good information out there. So I'm just trying to bring you a good scoop of it and kind of blend some of these things together so that if you're looking for some guidance on these sorts of things, you can just come to this class and it's there. And if you want more info, podcasts, yada, yada, I've got all of it. So knowing that, knowing what those things are, who has one thing from the class today that you're going to take into the rest of your week? Just one of these things, morning routine, 
knowing and plotting your most important thing for the week. Go ahead, Brady. Just trying to get this. This actually, like, I don't want to say that I'm not, like, getting into a morning routine. Like, I have, like, the thing I do first thing, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, like, the shift group. Like, I'll watch, they have, like, a call, and it's an hour ahead of us. So, like, I, like you know, I'll try to make sure I make that call, like, the first thing I do, just because it's, like, not necessarily just market talk, but it's, you know, they're going off the one thing as well. And, you know, they, it's just really inspirational. And I don't know, I just like to wake up and start my day with that, you know, during the week. So, that's, like, the one thing that I'm, like, trying to make sure that I'm up for like, every day. So, like, you know, I'm up in time for that and then start my day with that. So, it's on my mind, whatever the topic is, or, you know, just, you know, just real estate is on my mind first thing, which I mean, it might be a problem. You know, like you said, that you should, like, you know, meditate or, you know, like get like a different routine, you know, before you go to your phone or social media. But that's kind of been like the thing to get that in my head first thing of the day, get on that call, get inspired and go from there. That's great. Having something that gets you inspiration, energizes you, gets you pumped up and focused, great. I definitely find that when I'm having a day where I don't know what I should be doing, that turning to a quick podcast that helps me refocus is a really good way to get back on track. So I think that's great. For those of you who don't know, that Shift Pivot um, group is a group on Facebook, um, but they do a broadcast. So having that set time, you know, Grady, you've got to be up and you've got to be ready to watch it. Um, so that's a good good motivation to get out of bed at a certain time too. Anybody else, what are you gonna take from today's class? One thing you're gonna put into put into action. For oh me, God, it's scary really that nobody else. Okay, my, good. <laughs> for me, I'm gonna really lock down my calendar. It was something that I was already doing because I have other businesses as well, but mm -hmm. seeing all the trainings and things that are popping up, um, the most important thing for me is just really making sure that my time is allocated wisely, listening to what you're saying with me coming in new and like, you know, it getting crazy because I do have three other businesses and just thinking about what you're saying, like, you know, you all of a sudden these leads start coming in and you don't want to have your paychecks going up and down and up and down. I think it's going to be imperative that my schedule is very tight so that I can make sure I'm doing lead generation and then, you know, meeting these other things that I need to do. So this is very informative to me because I'm organized already. I was already thinking like, this is crazy. When I'm seeing all these meetings and whatnot, I even switched, I got a MacBook yesterday so I can make sure everything, everything was in sync because I'm like, it, it's just too many things, but listening to you guys and what you're doing, even like the Facebook thing, I seen the invites to them, but I know exactly what they were. So these are all things I want to tag in. So I got a lot from this and I'm definitely going to implement it. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. Having that time set for other things. Like I said, when you say yes to something, you're saying no to everything else. So being intentional about what you're saying yes to is really important. Anybody else have something they're going to implement? Come on. You're just watching these for entertainment. I can't believe that. <laughs> Liz, I want to work on a morning routine. I think it means I need to have an evening routine. So yeah. I go to bed on time. <laughs> I started setting my alarm so that at 9.30, my alarm screams at me and tells me to turn off my screens. Screen time over. I set it for 9.20, so I have 10 minutes to like, oh, mom, and then 9.30, cut it off. No screen time right before bed. It helps me sleep better. Yeah, that's a good one. Liz, what were you going to say? Um, I was going to say the email processing time. And can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay, good. I've been, um, it sounds, apparently I'm underwater half the time when I'm on my, uh, you know, camera and everything. So um, the email processing time, because coming from like corporate world, you're at your desk all day long or you're in meetings. So either way, you've got your phone, your laptop and everything buzzing at you and everybody's asking for something. And so I'm very excited to kind of do that and see like, how does that work? Because it's just about, like you say, you're saying yes to something, you're saying no to everything else. So I'm saying yes to email right now, but I'm not going to necessarily do some other things and get distracted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Multitasking is a myth. So <laughs> right. if you can focus on one thing at a time, you'll do it much better, much faster, and you can move on to something else. So that's a good one. Benji, were you going to say something? 
Yeah, I want to work on, um, I mean, a morning routine, but also you guys were kind of talking about, you know, the night before, and that's something I want to work on is making sure that I can get to bed at a more reasonable time. So I get up in the morning and can have a, you know, schedule of things to go through. That's awesome. And that's a good way to look at things from a one thing perspective, right? It's like, yes, I want to have a morning routine, but that means I have to get up at six. And the only way I'm getting up at six is if I go to bed by 10. And the only way I'm going to bed by 10 is if I turn off my screens by 930. And, you know, so it like it breaks down to something smaller, smaller, smaller. What's that tiny one thing that's going to make it all easier getting to bed on time. Great. Make that your one thing towards your morning routine. It really should be broken down to something that simple so that you, you know exactly what you need to do and you can do it. And then you can say, I did that thing. And you'll start to see the results of that. And then you can build from there. That's great. Anybody else before we wrap up? I'm gonna remember these. I'm gonna ask you how it's going because accountability is important too. <laughs> I love the email um, setting up and, and having that time. Also staying on the strict schedule where I don't feel bad when I don't answer the phones during my family time because mm -hmm. um, I feel like you know I do have to pick up or let me walk away and, and so forth. And um, I shouldn't have to feel bad if I'm with my family and I've accomplished everything I was supposed to. Yeah, and you can set it so that you know people know I'm not available right now. I'll call you back whenever. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something to get used to. We're so used to being available all the time, replying immediately. You're bad if you don't answer your phone. You're bad if you don't respond right away. But it's all about people knowing what to expect from you, right? So having that conversation ahead of time, letting your clients know, letting your co-brokes know, um, can avoid any frustration with that and kind of free you up to be really focused on what's most important at that time. Well, these are great. I really hope you do put these into practice. Um, it's a lot of things to think about all together. So like I said, just pick one at a time, come back to this video later and then pick something else. Um, but if time management is something that is something you're really struggling with, or you're finding that you feel overwhelmed with what you need to do, and you just can't, you can't make progress on your most important tasks, then, you know, give yourself some thinking time and get that plotted in your calendar. If there's nothing else you do, that's a great place to start. Um, but I'm telling you guys, owning your day, owning your time, it's not, it doesn't mean every minute is mine, but I know what I'm getting done at certain times and that time is not movable. And whatever blows up in the day or comes my way, that can happen during those other times and I can feel okay about it because I know I've got control over those other times and I'm getting stuff done in those other times so that the flexible parts of this job can happen in those other windows. So um, it really is meant to give you that flexibility and also make sure that those things are happening. So it's a combination, it's a dance, and it's something you'll always have to come back to, but this hopefully is a good outline to work off of um, for starters. So thank you all for coming, for participating. Um, if you, didn't hear this morning, productivity on Thursday at 9 a.m. is a required class for all launch agents. Um, so it's gonna be at 9 a.m. There will be everybody who is a coach in the launch program. We're talking about who we are, what we do, where to go for what. It's a really good comprehensive um, bit of clarity on what this program is set up to do for you and who you can go to for what. So if you're feeling a little lost, this will be great. If you think you're getting some good traction, but you need a reminder, this will also be great. It is required. Please make sure you show up. I'll be there as well. I look forward to seeing your faces. And um, if you guys wanna set up accountability calls, you still can reach out to me. Every week I do accountability calls, 20 to 30 minutes checking in on where you're making progress on your goals. If you wanna call me about what you're gonna do from this class, let's set up a time. Shoot me a text, we'll set it up, and then we'll, that accountability piece can be really important to helping you make progress and making sure you actually do it. So thank you again, you guys have a great week. Enjoy the semi-sunny day-ish. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'll see you all on Thursday, and then next week, Tuesday, we'll be back at it with another great topic. Thanks again. Thanks a lot, Amanda. Thank you. You're, you're Thank awesome. You, Thanks. You're welcome. Good, good afternoon. How do I get your tech, your phone number? I'll put it in the chat here.
Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome.